Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 13th of August. Indian Prime Minister launches major transparent taxation platform, says honest taxpayers are empowered. Protest erupts against illegal hydropower projects in Pakistan administered Kashmir. And floods leave one third of Bangladesh underwater, displaced millions. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday unveiled the transparent taxation honoring the honest platform in order to reform and simplify the tax system. This is aimed at easing compliance and rewarding honest taxpayers as the government looks to rebuild the pandemic hit economy. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday launched a platform transparent taxation honoring the honest which he said will strengthen efforts of reforming the tax system and ease tax compliance. Dedicating the new platform to honest taxpayers, PM Modi said, our effort is that our tax system should be seamless, painless and faceless. The new platform launched has major reforms like faceless assessment, faceless appeal and taxpayers charter, which will impart greater efficiency, transparency and accountability, eliminate physical interface between taxpayers and tax officers. इस प्लेटफॉर्म में फेसलेस असेसमेंट फेसलेस अपील और टैक्स पेयर चार्टर जैसे बड़े रिफॉर्म्स हैं फेसलेस असेसमेंट और टैक्स पेयर चार्टर आज से ही लागू हो गए जबकि फेसलेस अपील की सुविधा 25 सितंबर यानी दीनदयाल उपाध्याय जी के जन्मदिन से पूरे देश भर में नागरिकों के लिए उपलब्ध हो जाएगी द वर्चुअल इवेंट वॉज अटेंडेड बाय फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन एंड वेरियस चैंबर्स ऑफ कॉमर्स ट्रेड एसोसिएशन चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स एसोसिएशन एंड एमिनेंट टेक्सपेयर्स India will fund the implementation of a major connectivity project in Maldives through a 400 million US dollars line of credit and 100 million US dollars grant India's foreign minister S J Shankar said on Thursday after holding wide ranging talks with his Maldivian counterpart Abdullah Shahid the 6.7 kilometer greater mali connectivity project will be the largest civilian infrastructure project in Maldives connecting capital mali with three neighboring islands It will help revitalize and transform Maldivian economy Jashankar tweeted. He also announced start of regular cargo ferry service and an air travel bubble between the two countries to boost trade and commerce and shore up tourism arrivals and revenues. The first flight under the air bubble is expected to commence with health protocols on 18th of August. In news from Pakistan Residents of Pakistan's largest city of Karachi continue to suffer due to rising piles of garbage in the metropolis. Residents blame the federal government of being ignorant to the issue of increasing garbage and overflowing drains even during monsoons which adds more to their suffering every year. At the time when monsoon rains in Pakistan's largest city of Karachi have already disturbed day-to-day -day life of locals Overflowing drains and rising piles of garbage are adding to the suffering. Residents of Karachi while expressing concerns over the rising piles of garbage in the city said authorities have left the drains and garbage grounds unattended for weeks as a result of which the waste is now on streets and is even entering some households. Aap mere piche dekh sakte hain kachra khana jo hai wo hafton se ho gaya safai nahi hui. और फिर एक्स्ट्रा कचरा हो गया उसमें नालों की सफाई तो एक अलग मैटर है वो तो साल भर होना चाहिए अभी छियासी मिलीमीटर बारिश हुई थी आधा कराची डूबिया अब महकमा मौसम ने 130 से 150 का बोला 
तो इसका मतलब है पूरा कराची डूबेगा Locals blame the government for its inability to handle the increasing trash and sewage issues. Hukumat pata nahi kya kar rahi hai. Us samajh mein nahi aayi hamari hukumat keh rahe the ki Imran Khan aayega tabdili aayegi ya tabdili aayegi dekho ye kachra pada hua. Earlier the government of Pakistan had claimed to have a plan to handle the trash and sewage which is an annual problem in Karachi. But according to Karachi Heights the government has done nothing. but big claims on a massive protest was held against china and pakistan in pakistan administered kashmir on wednesday night over the illegal construction of hydropower projects on the neelam and jhelum rivers protesters expressed concern that the so called development projects posed a serious threat to environment in the illegally occupied region A massive protest rally against China and Pakistan was held in Pakistan administered Kashmir on Wednesday night over the illegal construction of hydropower projects on the Neelam and Jhelum rivers. The protesters condemned proposed construction of Kohala hydropower project on the Jhelum river and highlighted a hydropower project on the Neelam river has already severely affected life. and posed a serious environmental concern in Pakistan administered Kashmir they accuse that Pakistan and China are violating the UN security council resolutions by occupying rivers in the illegally occupied region they got think that Pakistan is a failed state and the Pakistan jo hai wo kisi tarike se bhi Pakistan se jo hai najat hasil karna jo hai wo ab jaiz hota ja raha hai तो हम ये इस पावर प्रोजेक्ट की शदीद मुखालफत करते हैं और इसको नहीं होना चाहिए दरियाओं का रुख नहीं मोड़ना चाहिए और मुजफ्फरबाद शहर तबाह हो जाएगा एक्टिविस्ट हैव लॉन्ग रेस्ड कंसर्न ओवर रैम्प एंड डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्स एंड इकोलॉजी इन द इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड रीजन थ्रू दि सो कॉल डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट बाई पाकिस्तान They blame that any voice of dissent that seeks to resist the exploitative agenda of Pakistan is muzzled with force. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said that he warned his Russian counterpart Sergey Lavrov that there would be an enormous price to pay if Moscow is offering bounties to kill US soldiers or other western troops in Afghanistan. This comes as the New York Times earlier reported that Russian military intelligence units secretly offered bounties to Taliban linked militants for killing coalition forces in Afghanistan. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Wednesday said he warned his Russian counterpart Sergey Lavrov that there would be an enormous price to pay if Moscow is offering bounties to kill US soldiers or other western troops in Afghanistan. The New York Times in June reported that a Russian military intelligence unit secretly offered bounties to Taliban linked militants for killing coalition forces in Afghanistan including American troops citing US intelligence officials. What we've said is this uh if the Russians are offering money to kill Americans or for that matter other westerners as well there will be an enormous price to pay. That's what I shared with Foreign Minister Lavrov. Uh, I know our military has talked to their senior leaders as well. Uh, we won't brook that we won't tolerate that last month us and european sources familiar with intelligence reporting said that the united states had acquired fresh reporting backing up the allegations that russia had encouraged taliban affiliated militants to kill us and allied soldiers in afghanistan the intelligence reporting comes as the united states has been engaged in negotiating with the taliban as well as the afghan government to get a stalled peace agreement struck in february for the withdrawal of us troops moving In news from Bangladesh, flood fury continues in Bangladesh as about one third of the country has been inundated by river waters. Millions of people were reported to be displaced on Wednesday, and 161 people had died in floods which started more than a month ago. About one third of Bangladesh has been inundated by floods, with local media reporting on Wednesday that millions of people were displaced. and 161 people had died in floods which started more than a month ago in the village of loha jang about 34 miles from bangladeshi capital dhaka local residents displayed by floods received relief materials 
with some rowing small boats across flood waters to access the collection points. Sandbags were placed along the river bank at Shimulia ferry terminal after Padma River overflowed and caused erosion. Residents were forced to travel by boat and had to move their cattle to higher grounds to avoid the flooding. প্লাবিত হয়েছে লোহুজঙ্গে আমরা আজকে টলার যুগে বিভিন্ন জায়গায় বিভিন্ন বাড়িতে আমরা এই খাবার দিতেছি এবং ত্রাণ বিতরণ করতেছি বন্যা তো দুর্গতদের পাশে দ্য ফ্লাডস হ্যাভ অলসো কমপ্লিকেটেড দি এফর্টস টু ফাইট দ্য নোভেল করোনা ভাইরাস বাংলাদেশ রিপোর্টেড 266498 কোভিড 19 ইনফেকশনস উইথ 3513 ডেথস অ্যাজ অফ থার্সডে The Indian uncle of US vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris has said that her nomination as Joe Biden's running mate was a historic day for the Indian community. 55-year-old Harris who was born to an Indian mother and a Jamaican father has made history as the first black woman and Asian American on a major presidential ticket. The Indian uncle of US Senator Kamala Harris said on Wednesday that her nomination as democratic nominee Joe Biden's running mate was a historic day for the Indian community Harris a 55 year old US senator from California made history as the first black woman and Asian American on a major presidential ticket she became the senate's second black woman in its history when she was elected in 2016 Kamala Harris was born to an Indian mother and a Jamaican father who both immigrated to the United States to study her maternal uncle Gopalan Balachandran who lives in South Delhi said it was a proud moment for the family Balachandran whose phone hasn't stopped ringing since Biden's declaration said her mother would have been proud of her so i feel happy our family feels happy okay and i feel happy that my sister Shamla her mother would have been very happy and proud of her daughter so It's a historic day in number of ways for the Indian community for the first time getting to a high political point. In a speech in 2018 Senator Harris also mentioned early visits to her grandparents in the upscale neighborhood of Basant Nagar in Chennai along the shores of the Bay of Bengal in southern India talking about Harris's fondness for food and music Balachandran said during her visits she loved both South Indian and American food The coronavirus pandemic has crushed the tourism industry of India leaving thousands of people associated with the sector in the picturesque hill town of Shimla struggling to survive partial lockdowns across the country and strict standard operating procedures have declined the tourist influx in the state this year The coronavirus pandemic has crushed the tourism industry of India, leaving thousands of people associated with the sector in the northern hill town of Shimla to survive. Shimla, capital of Northern Himachal state, receives most of its revenues from tourism and agriculture. Although agricultural activities were allowed during the lockdown, tourism remained shut and was facing a slowdown even before the curfew was announced. Partial lockdown across the country and strict standard operating procedures have declined tourist influx in the state this year that currently has over 1200 active coronavirus cases. कुछ गिने चुने होटल और गेस्ट हाउसेस वगैरह खुले हैं बट वो तो ना के बराबर ही है नुकसान तो बहुत ज्यादा है ये तो करोड़ों में है और इसका भी भरपूर भी कैसे करेंगे वो समझ के बाहर है India on Thursday registered highest single day spike of 66999 cases in the last 24 hours. The country's coronavirus tally touched 2,396,638 including active cases, discharged and deaths. Meanwhile, drug firm Zydus Cadilla on August 13 said it has launched Remdesivir under the brand name Remdesivir used to treat patients suffering from severe symptoms of COVID-19 in the Indian market. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.